Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to use the Weidmuller configurator to create a UR20 remote I.O. system or island. So we open up the software, make sure we're in the start as there, and then we pick remote I.O. systems. Give it a few seconds for the software to generate a project. And the first page you're presented with is selection of the type of communications coupler or header. So if we expand the description field, you can see we have many options. Can open, device net, ethercat, ethernet IP, Modbus, Profinet, etc. So you pick the type of header or communications module you want, coupler. So I'm going to go for Modbus TCP in this example. OK, so you're now presented with a physical view of how it will appear on the rail. So the next stage now is to add the modules you require. You can click on the module and you get information like the article number, the type description and the size of the unit. So click on add modules and then the first option is to add digital input modules. So you can then define how many digital inputs you require, whether you want a single conductor or free conductor, free conductor meaning you're going to get a zero volt and a plus 24 volt and then the signal for example bringing in a proximity switch free wire then you can bring all three wires directly to the module if you wish two conductor is more commonly associated with output cards where you've just got a, a zero volt common feed to say a solenoid and then the signal the output to drive the solenoid and then you've got free conductor plus fe functional earth so it's offering me a UR24DIP, 4 meaning 4 input, digital input, P meaning positive switching, PNP input. Hover your mouse over there, it gives you a description. We click in that pull down and we see a selection of possible options. So 4DIN is an NPN switching. Uh, HD means it high density plug and socket style connection. And then as discussed, you've got two wire, three wire options as well. Okay, so I've said I want a 16 DIP and I've said I require four of those. Then I'll pick digital output modules and go through the same process of picking. I'm just going to go for the standard uh, 16 digital output PNP switching. And then you've got solid state outputs and then you've got relay outputs. So I'm going to go for the solid state standard digital outputs, which will be 0.5 amps per output. So I add those and then I can add some analog modules. So I just want four analogs and automatically it's offering me that card, which is four analog input. UI means all variants of um, voltage and current, 16 bit resolution. And these are the options. So you've got, again, standard push-in connections, HD would be the high density plug and socket style connections and DIAG means you get additional diagnostic data and then we also do 12-bit and some more specialist units like heart for example okay so we add one of those and you can see the rack is growing as I add them then let's have an analog output module and again we just want to uh, four of those uh, four AO I UI voltage or current 16 bit and again with the option with increased diagnostics the M means with marine approval okay so we've got a fairly decent sized system now and let's just add one more card a temperature module so this is a four analog input RTD with additional diagnostics. Then we also do thermocouple modules. So, so there are a few different options available to us. Tells you the overall size of the system. We can now click on this box, add auto power feeder. What that basically means is if these two terminals here do not provide enough power, the two white terminals, it will add additional output power. So if you notice, it's added free of PFO, power feed for outputs. 
So just to explain, on the actual main coupler, you've got two banks of connectors. The top connector is feeding the input modules and it's rated at 24 volt 10 amp and the bottom connector is feeding 24 volt DC to all of the output modules and that's also rated at 10 amp. So when you exceed 10 amp on your 24 volt you need these power feeder modules because remembering that um, we've got 16 digital outputs 0.5 amps per card sorry per channel times 16 so it's 8 amps per 4 modules so this is why we need the additional 24 volt supply with some more current into these to provide the additional power we also do PFI modules, so they are power feed modules which provide additional 24 volt feed in to supply input modules if you've got many input modules on your system. So if you click in the power requirements tab, uh, at the moment I'm in what you call expert mode if you notice down the bottom left. If I turn that off you'll see what I was saying earlier, you've got uh, sensor supply actuator supply so obviously that's your input output supply and output current per application so you've got um, 8 amps here via the auxiliary modules the PFO modules if I click on expert mode you get a lot more detail so it's saying here for the input path I have 10,000 milliamps 10 amps and for the output path I have 10,000 milliamps and it's telling me here per each module I add so I've got 14 modules so when I get to the fifth module I need 8 amps to drive that 16 way output card and then 8 amps for that module 8 amps for that 8 amps for that and in expert mode you've got this simultaneous factor which basically allows you to tweak the percentage of outputs on at any one time because in the real world you may have a solenoids solenoid for up down left right in out one output on out of two so that may mean that although you've got 16 outputs on that card only eight are ever on at a time so you you're coming down from eight amps to 4 amps plus the power that the card itself requires so that's a way of tweaking based on your personal application how much current you really need and that way you can possibly reduce the number of additional power feed modules you'll need so I've made those all 50% for the four output modules so when I check the auto power feed now hopefully you'll find that it reduces the count of these three modules so double checking the power and yes you see I've I've removed the need for two of those power feed modules so if you're not 100% sure the best option is to allow all power feed modules to be added if you know your system well and you know how it's going to work then you may be able to use this similarity factor to reduce that count so that's quite a useful powerful tool just to say the uh, Vidmuller configurator when you're using it with U remote does not produce any directory of registers or software related information that you could use within the PLC unfortunately it produces your rack view which is just generating now so there's a rack view we can click on each card and get more details and we can then zoom in so you notice that white pins are signal the red pins are plus 24 volt and the blue pins are zero volt so these two connectors on the left are in power and out power so they're both inputs to the system one's feeding input modules one's feeding output modules you can daisy chain across so you can come out of the red top connector into the red bottom connector if that's what you want to do and then here again on that particular card you've got a signal 
a blue, a red and a green. So green being functional earth. And the little orange tabs on the top are what you actually click to remove it or click it onto the rail. So it's a modular system that actually doesn't have a back plane. The modules just click together and then you flip those orange tabs to get it to lock into position. You can see the uh, the type description alongside each module. If you go into this area, you can then say show me the article number or order number and then you get the actual 10 digit order code so you can see both. It's automatically generated a bit of DIN rail that it's got sit on. You can bring up the dimensions, get your overall dimensions, and then you have all of these different views available to you. So you can re produce a report or technical file which will give you all of these views, and then you can rotate the device, all angles, zoom in and out, and see quite a lot of detail. So that's quite a powerful tool. What you can also do is go into file, give it a name, you can put some order number, some more technical info, you've got a comments box, so there's a lot of information you can put in there. It tells you the component parts used in your project, and then you can save as and put it in a particular location on your PC. It's just saving the file now. Okay, if I now go into File, you can now go to Project to Documentation. And you can pr produce an assembly view, an article list, or complete documentation. So as you can see, you can print, you can export to PDF, and you can define what views you want to include in your report. You can also include the article number or the materials number it's up to you so you can generate nine pages of documentation go to article list again you can print or do a pdf export and gives its all time and date stamped there's the part numbers the quantities the overall size and you can also do a xls export so send that straight to your buying office to generate the order and then you can do a save of complete documentation okay so save that documentation wherever you want to save it now if we open a file have a look at it what it's quite nicely done is automatically downloaded the data sheets so you've got the data sheets for each module including the rail so you've got a data sheet for the in all the individual IO cards and the coupler and all of your views, bill of material, time and date stamped. And there's an example of one of the data sheets. And there you go, there's your assembled views saved as a PDF. You can also go into an area called interfaces and this is quite powerful as well. So you can download a step file, a DXF file, you can download ePlan files and you just export them. So that's, you can bring that straight into your own CAD system. If you notice the icon, it's Videmuller. So Mprint Pro is the printer software. So I'm not going to go into detail explaining it within this uh, video you can actually create little the little white ident labels that go on individual individual modules you can name all of those in here and then export the um, idents you've created into the mprint pro software and then print those labels and you added those printed labels onto the finished system and it looks very professional so that really concludes the video there are additional videos you can find online regarding using mprint pro i will add a hyperlink to the information with this video so you can go and have a look and become more familiar with the software because it does a lot more than create you remote 
files. It can be used for creating standard terminal block files, enclosures and terminals within enclosures, including the uh, cutouts for cable glands and HDC heavy duty connectors. There are wizards for specialist application style terminal blocks. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.